Now, as industry interest in digital assets continues to gather pace, experimentation has shifted to application. This, in turn, has brought the issues of interoperability, industry standards and customer protection to the fore. And while the workflows and technologies that are being deployed in support of digital assets are new, the challenges the industry faces may seem similar to some. Well, to explore this in greater detail, we can speak to Jens Hackmeister, Head of Issuer Services and New Digital Markets at Clearstream. Jens, welcome to Cybos 2023. Welcome to Cybos Television. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me in, uh, in lovely Toronto. Uh, now, let's get straight into it. Uh, why does the, sec the security services industry have to go digital, do you think? If you allow, I would uh, I would turn the question around. Why uh, has the industry not gone digital so far? Because mm -hmm. if you look at other industry, in my views, um, they have done their digital journey already. Take the music industry, for example, where their core product, a song, is an MP3 right now. And the financial services industry, they haven't turned their key product into a smart digital object. So a security is still a security, and even up to being a piece of paper and not being a smart digital object. I think this is the main thing and the main step which needs to uh, take place and happen um, in order to take the markets to, to the real, um, to the next level of efficiency and, uh, and market growth. If you look back in, uh, in history, then, uh, then securities markets, they have always developed in kind of S-curves where technology was a key driver toward the next deep part of an S-curve. This was uh, really back at the time when markets were taken electronic. And right now, um, we are, in my view, at the, at the same, at the same uh, step where, uh, where we potentially see uh, the next deep rise of an S-curve. Um, um, by, uh, by this kind of new technologies, be it DLT, be it some of the streaming technologies, cloud, etc., etc., And these are, in my view, the enablers then really to make this leap and uh, make our core product a smart digital object and then take market infrastructure in order to enable uh, next, uh, next levels of market efficiency and market growth. So you say, why haven't we uh, uh, gone digital yet? So how far along are we on this journey? Well, I, I, I would say um, we could have progressed more, in my view. I think we are still in a very much um, fragmented landscape. We have seen um, a lot of POCs, we have seen a lot of sandboxing, but uh, what we have not seen to a great extent is really um, new infrastructure, real ecosystems uh, of, uh, of digital assets and digital securities. For example, D7 uh, of Deutsche Börse and Clearstream is one of these ecosystems, so we are starting to really build out real infrastructure. But still, I think there are some, some platforms around uh, digital collateral, there are some uh, who are facilitating digital issuance processes, we see some market participants uh, entering the space from the from the crypto side in, in crypto custody um, some uh, um, some platforms around and networks around uh, alternative digital assets but what we haven't seen is really this kind of comprehensive ecosystem which allows um, multiple asset classes multiple use cases um, clearly regulation is still fragmented um, so we have seen some good um, good progress in Europe. We see the US a bit, in my view, a bit struggling. So no harmonized kind of framework of, of global regulation, uh, not to be mentioned the um, the unresolved issue of uh, of the cash lag uh, for digital uh, securities market. So um, I think um, we are still um, in uh, in a kind of early stage of um, of market development. So early stages right now, but I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball. Uh, Jens, and, and look ahead perhaps 10 years. Mm -hmm. In 10 years' time, where do you see us? Where are we going to be on this journey? Well, I hope, uh, and this is now really the flip side of my, of my last answer, I hope that we really see then um, um, a good handful or two handful of real ecosystems uh, having, having evolved so that um, we see um, infrastructures which support um, multiple use cases which are uh, an, an, an enabler to um, to this market efficiency I've, I've spoken about, where you can connect to different ways of digital payment uh, rates, where you can um, 
instantly issue where you create this kind of direct distributions from issuer to investors where you can pick and choose settlement uh, as your fingertips whether it is T plus one, T plus uh, X uh, instant uh, settlement where you can have all these kind of um, possibilities which you have with uh, auto asset servicing of, uh, of, uh, of smart securities going forward. I hope that in 10 years from now we really see some of those, um, some of those ecosystem evolving and, and maturing and really uh, market adoption of, of such ecosystems. Mm. And so that's your hope. Mm -hmm. what, what are the challenges to, to achieving that? Well, I mean, there are there are multiple challenges, but uh, referring to um, to our to the joint paper which we uh, issued today, together with DTCC and Euroclear, let me let me really pick two. One is, um, I would say, um, uh, kind of uh, the the scale element. So the the kind of um, um, adoption of um, of. Uh, of these type of infrastructure by a large group of market participants. If you if you look at statistics, uh, over 70% of the infrastructures which we uh, and 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 projects which we see today have less than six market participants on average. So, which shows you that there are no these no uh, kind of go-to. Uh, infrastructures in the market where you see a lot of um, market participants really um, connecting to. This is this is um, um, one uh, one element, and the other element is clearly what I can would call alignment, or you can call it interoperability. So, if you, for instance, have different um, issuance platforms, yeah, they operate on different protocols, private permission ones, some uh, some legacy elements. Um, you have um, different uh, jurisdictions, different rule books under which they operate. So there is still this kind of um, um, different barriers which uh, which show that there is um, fragmentation and this fragmentation in my view makes it very difficult for market participants to pick and choose. So it's like if you go to a restaurant and you have a long menu it is it is uh, it is hard to pick and choose because the the choice and the variety is is so broad but if there are only two or three meals to pick and choose from it is much easier to say okay I, I have to ch choose one of those and either one I, I might pick and choose, it might be a good taste. And it's the same with market infrastructure. So we haven't seen this kind of alignment and converging of market infrastructure, which makes it easy for market participants to really connect. And last but not least, probably it's fair to say that finally, it is not um, um, technology which is driving this, but finally it is um, um, value add to the client, which is driving market adoption. And these strong use cases combined with compelling uh, offerings in, in, uh, in market infrastructure and ecosystems, in my view, really can make the change uh, in terms of adoption going forward. Mm. And you mentioned fragmentation there. Uh, one of the big themes of this year's Cybos is collaboration in a fragmented world. Uh, where can financial market infrastructure providers help to do this, push yeah. this along? I mean, uh, if, you, if you go back in history, then uh, FMIs always have been, uh, on the one hand side, providers of trust. They have been uh, providers of uh, neutrality and, and uh, kind of catalyst to market standards. And I see exactly these type of roles and functions um, um, being, being uh, played uh, in this kind of next wave of, of um, digital security services markets and, and market efficiency and growth. So, I believe if, if FMI is somehow aligned in a way uh, how A, they would look at technology, uh, including smart contracts, potentially tokenization, the way they look at how to operate um, these types of infrastructure, um, align on, uh, on regulatory frames, so rule book, how to integrate into, into legacy, this would, uh, in my view, be a huge, huge um, catalyzation um, if, um, process and effect on uh, to show the market and market participant that that um, that there is this kind of trusted, neutral, and reliable market infrastructure which is provided to which they then connect. And once they connect in one ecosystem, they can probably browse around um, the the very um, the very different ecosystems which are hopefully then properly interconnected. Well, we're certainly in the right place to begin such an alignment uh, here at Cybos 2023. We're going to let you go. See, I'm sure you've many hands to shake and conversations to have over the course of the next few days. Uh, Jens Hackmeister, Head of Issuer Services and New Digital Markets at Clearstream, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.